Hello, uh, my name is uh, Florian. I'm the founder of uh, UREG and I'm happy to share my experience today as, uh, as a founder. Uh, I, uh, I come from a banking background. I've been uh, working in banks uh, for the last uh, 25 years. I was uh, 12 years in Tokyo and I've been in Singapore since 2007. Uh, uh, my last two roles in the banking world were uh, of head of sales, head of fixed income sales for two uh, major European banks, uh, where I was uh, managing uh, teams uh, across Asia. I was responsible for the for the whole region. Uh, why why did I choose to uh, move away from uh, this uh, industry and uh, set up uh, a, a new company, uh, Rectech? for different reasons, but the, the, the first one is that I believe there was an opportunity uh, in, uh, in the industry, uh, especially with regards to onboarding, uh, reporting, regulatory workflows, which is what we're looking at. Uh, there was on one side clients, so I had my teams, myself speaking to clients who were not necessarily satisfied with the processes and within banks, uh, client management team, onboarding team, KYC teams, who likewise uh, were sometimes or often unhappy about the, the processes. Uh, so the, the first reason uh, and, and the main reason behind my decision to, as a founder, to establish a new company, uh, a small company, was the opportunity in, uh, in the market. Um, a, lot, a lot of people ask me how I find it or how I like it today. Uh, it's obviously very different from a large structure where you have a lot of support. Uh, there is uh, by definition an infrastructure that that helps you with regards to business whether as, as a founder it's a, a lot of work. It's a lot of, of time spent thinking about what you should do, what you should do right, what you might be doing wrong asking questions uh, all the time. And mostly it's a lot of time spent doing very different things. Uh, you, as a friend of mine uh, was, uh, was mentioning a few times, um, it's uh, your head of HR, your head of finance, your head of accounting, your head of everything. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are still uh, after two years, uh, the company is two years old, we are still a, a small company. We're about uh, 10 people, a bit over 10 people now. Uh, so I have help. I have had uh, a lot of um, support, uh, but, but still the, the logic uh, remains the same. It's, uh, it, it's a permanent search for uh, the right things and, and for um, new, new solutions. I, I see there are people uh, on, the, on the call. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to discuss about what we do uh, what I do as a founder, but it might be more interesting for people on the call if they have any question that I could answer and, and share my, uh, my experience. Would anybody on the call have, uh, have questions? Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, I just joined this call actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, may I ask, um, what kind of company do you uh, do? Okay, uh, so UREG is a RegTech. A RegTech is a specific area of the fintech environment. Uh, it's regulatory technology. So you have a, a number of uh, areas, processes, fields that uh, we, we look after, that we touch. Uh, it can be compliance, it can be reporting, regulatory workflows, uh, AML, for example, uh, exchange of regulatory uh, data. Um, so what, what we do ourselves as a reg tech is around the management of document, regulatory document, reporting document, the management of regulatory data, the ability to extract data, structure it through artificial intelligence, uh, through machine learning and to use it to help automate and digitalize processes for our clients. 
We also uh, have developed recently a blockchain-based application for EAG data. Again, it's about reporting, uh, but in the specific uh, area of, uh, of green uh, energy, renewable, uh, renewable energy. Uh, so it's, it's really to try to simplify processes to automate less manual intervention, which means also less mistakes uh, in the regulatory space. I see, thank you. <laughs> so uh, uh, may I ask like, what kind of clients do you usually serve? Is it like banks or companies more? Technically, uh, we serve pretty much uh, any type of clients. So originally because of my background, I was mostly looking at corporates, at uh, asset managers, for example, insurance company, FIs. And as we developed uh, products, as we started to engage and discuss with more uh, prospects or potential clients, our horizon widened significantly. Uh, so now we, we're talking to very different type of clients. So we talk to banks. Uh, banks tend to be um, a longer process with regards to client acquisition because uh, the, the sales cycle is, is just longer. We talk to asset managers, we talk to um, corporates, we talk to trust services, to other fintechs, to payment companies. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and, and now we talk to energy companies uh, on, on the blockchain application uh, I mentioned. So it, it's, uh, it's fairly wide and especially as RecTech uh, is moving to a larger number of industries. Uh, oh, very much at the beginning, a number of reg tech were working in finance, but there are new regulatory constraints, guidelines or requirements in other industries. I mean, ESG is one of the examples because it touches pretty much everybody, uh, but the processes, the workflows are very similar, which means that uh, the know-how, the expertise that a number of fintech, reg techs have acquired can be transported and used in other, uh, other areas. So to, that, that, that's the long answer. The short answer to your question is, we talk to banks, yes. We talk to financial companies, yes. But we talk to a very wide range of, of, uh, of companies or industries. Oh, thank you for answering. Uh, may I just ask like, another question? Um, so I'm a bit curious about um the like legal aspect. So basically you're um like check are you kind of like a third party uh, auditor this kind of thing? We are not an auditor. Uh, we 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 don't have the the credential, the licenses, or what auditors might actually require. Uh, we help our clients process their information, their data. Today, we don't verify it. Uh, we oh, might yeah. one day. We can extract information from documents. So for example, I can extract or we can extract documents from passports, from utility bills, from bank statements, for incorporation documents, from a number of legal documents. But this information, these data, is not our data. We help our clients process it. It belongs to them. So we don't verify. We don't stamp the the, uh, the 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 data. We don't say yes, it's correct or it's incorrect. We have ways to suggest to some of our clients that the information might be accurate or that there might be some mistakes. But we will. It's not our information, so it's not our role to 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 validate today. Uh, specific information. We might in the future, there are, there are different processes or different areas where we've been asked to do it. And we're considering whether we want to go in, in a slightly different direction because it's a, it's a different business. Uh, it is uh, the, the validation of, uh, of data and of information. Uh, but technically we could because we can extract the information and we can verify against other sources Typically in a data extraction, what we do today is when we extract data, we can 
cross-check and validate with different methodologies or different sources, for example. Oh, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there other questions? Or if you have more questions, please don't hesitate. No? Maybe other, other people might have questions on the on the call, although you were the most courageous, you're the one who went first. <laughs> hi, hi, I just want to introduce myself, I'm Sue, and I just want to, I joined a little late, so I do apologize, but I'm really interested in your FinTech journey. Do you, um, I, I don't know if I missed that when you have shared, but I would like to actually uh, find out more. My, my FinTech journey you, as yeah. to why, why I'm here today? Yes, and then like, how do you, yeah, I, I'm sure you assume you're a founder of the, of the startup. And uh, yeah, what what uh, inspired you to start, to take this journey? And how has it been? Okay. Uh, so I, I explained that at the beginning uh, of, of yeah. the call, but I'll go through it. I come from a banking environment. Uh, I've been in banking for about 25 years. Uh, I was previously head of sales. I've been in Singapore since 2007. I was head of sales for two uh, major uh, major banks, European banks, with teams across Asia. So the first reason why I founded and I started this venture is because there was an opportunity in the industry. I, I, was, I wanted to fix, or I was trying to fix a problem, which is the problem around KYC and onboarding. Uh, because I had on one side of my teams had clients who generally were not happy with the way the processes were uh, implemented, and on the other side we had KYC team onboarding teams where likewise it was it was difficult. Uh, from there we expanded in two directions in terms of product, because from an original goal of KYC onboarding, building a document exchange or a data repository. Uh, we expanded to regulatory reporting processes, including today in ESG, for example. Uh, and we also expanded client-wise. Uh, we were very much, maybe because of my background, focused on financial institutions, corporates, and we just are talking to a much wider uh, client segment, much wider client segment or a, a much wider group of, of, of clients or, or, or prospects. So that the, the, the rational, the, the initial um, reason why I, I started this journey was because I was trying to fix a problem. Uh, the, the other reason and what you discover throughout the journey, any stuff, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, people will say, oh, I want to create a company or I want to set up a fintech. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. It's tough and it requires a lot of work. Um, uh, but the other reason is that it's just very interesting. I'm not saying that banking is not interesting, but it's uh, refreshing and motivating. You do something different. You meet people with different backgrounds or different skill sets, uh, different stories than the one you were working with previously uh, you meet a lot of very smart very interesting people and it's refreshing it's intellectually interesting and therefore it's uh, it's motivating because it's a different cycle and you just use some of the skill sets or some of the experiences you had previously to and you apply them differently but but it's uh, so that that's the second thing that is important in the journey i think is is you have to find it interesting you have to like it yeah, uh, you have to be aware that it's going to be difficult and, and there will be a number of hurdles. But uh, so the, the journey, as long as it's interesting and as long as you enjoy what you're doing and you think you contribute something, it's, um, it's not painful. It's, uh, it's hard work, but uh, you, you do it uh, voluntarily and uh, happily. Well, thank you for sharing that. That is inspiring. And you have picked like the one of the biggest pain point uh, in, the, in the whole entire, uh, all like challenges in the financial institutions. Because personally, that's what I do too. And so I can kind of really appreciate that, especially it comes from a banker. And, uh, and 
yeah, I, I really have to commend you for that and, and, your, and your journey. And may I also know what are some of the challenges that you're facing like today? Because I'm sure that's not a, a straightforward uh, path, right? No, it's not. It's, and how it's... can MES support a fintech startup like you better? By the way, I'm with MES and uh, 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 Okay. Um, well, MES is actually supporting us uh, already. We had uh, two grants. We were awarded two grants, two FSTI POC grants from the MAS, which were extremely helpful uh, to to help us develop uh, because uh, because you just have resources and and therefore you can uh, you can build products. Uh, we are also in contact with the MAS uh, on on various touch points. So the, the MAS generally is uh, is very supportive of the fintech and and regtech uh, uh, environment. Um, Singapore as a, as a fintech center is is also supportive. So this this is is a good thing in the way that it takes away some of the challenges because the first challenge is. Um, Money or one of the challenges money is if you want to build something is going to take resources and not only money but money is is, is one of them. Um, I think one of the of the main challenge uh, and maybe that's because I come from a, a sales role is to ensure that your products meet a need from your clients. And by that, I mean that you want to avoid the trap and some fintechs or some other companies everywhere uh, uh, fall into that trap, but you want to avoid building great products that don't necessarily have a concrete client application because you have people who are, who are extremely smart who put something together that, that is great, but where they struggle to then have clients adopt it or use it just because uh, you doesn't match or there's something a bit different. So the, the great challenge is to make sure that you meet your client needs, your client's expectations. And clients are demanding. So you need to understand the processes very well. I'm, I'm not a tech person by trading, as you can see, I'm a, more on the business side, but you need to have a very sound understanding of the business processes because tech is only here to apply and solve business processes. So I would say that's the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge is to find the right people to do it, mm. uh, and and uh, and and to find different type of people because I mean the, there are a number of 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 of, of books or, or courses around diversity in teams, but and I'm not talking diversity in the sense of of ESG today, but you need different skill set. You need people who can do different things, uh, and you need to bring them together. And this is actually difficult. Managing people is difficult. Mm. Uh, I know from experience in my previous life when I was managing a, <laughs> a lot of people, but even now. So that, that's the second challenge is to find the right people who understand the vision, understand what you want to do, and who can help you implement it. Thank but you. I think I think the bigger challenge, sorry if the answer is a bit long, no, no, is, no. Is, is to manage to trigger change with your clients because you're in most cases bringing something a bit different you're trying to have or to help them adopt change and and change is a long process so i mean I, apart from that there's a number of things in terms of how you organize etc but i think the, these are the the main challenge first is to make sure that you're client centric the second to make sure that you have the right people and third is to make sure that you're able to move or, or, or impact your clients so that ultimately they implement change and adopt your solutions. Well, thank you. Thank you for kind of helping us understand the landscape, the challenges, you know, making a products that meet the needs of your users that's relevant. And also no obviously very uh, thankful that our brand actually helps you. And, uh, <laughs> Very much, very much. Is there uh, anything that MES can do more other than what we have already offered? Um, there's, there's always more that people can do, right? but uh, I mean, 
there's a, there's a few things you you do already a lot to be to be very honest when you look at i mean this week the announcements the 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 guidance the leadership that mas provides to the ecosystem uh, so yes you can always spend more money you can always wish i think if i had one wish of what mas can do more but that's again my personal feeling is to push bigger institutions Mm -hmm. uh banks or or bigger asset managers to implement change a bit faster and mostly to be less afraid of adopting solutions that are uh, developed by smaller companies or smaller fintechs and i'm talking for me i'm a member of the Rectech uh, subcommittee of the singapore mm -hmm. fintech association mm -hmm. and we're actually looking at at how we can uh, reach out to the industry to promote, to educate uh, larger, to promote rec tech and to educate larger institutions. And, and it's a sentiment that is shared by the number of people. Larger institutions tend to be a bit shy <laughs> in adopting solutions that are developed by smaller companies. So I don't know if there's a way for MAS to, to push them gently, but <laughs> that, well, would, well, guess, that would be helpful. <laughs> what, what do you think are the, are, are the pause? I mean, what I can think of is their legacy systems, right? That are probably makes integration a little bit uh, more more uh, challenging. So, so it may not be a, a straightforward, thing but but uh yeah i mean if you can think of any things that mes can be uh of a, a push for for right text like you you know we'll definitely love to hear from you okay i'll, I'll definitely will let you know <laughs> yeah well you know so that you know this is a recorded session and your session will be played on talent pavilion throughout the year it really? is uh, this platform is organized by MES, and so your voice will be heard. So you, we have about five minutes left, and I definitely want to hear your heart, like sharing from your heart. What are, what are, if I were to give you five minutes now, the message you want to communicate to MES, to the industry, to the FIs, especially you come from an FIs, now you're a startup, you, you have like an inside views of both, and what would you say? Five minutes. Thank you. That that's a tough question. You're you're putting me uh, on on the on the spot. Well, it's okay. Be um, candid. Be candid. This is a very very small audience. Yes. Well, you 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 reco you're recording it. Um, again, is 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 the the there is somewhat a lag between the digital. Uh, um, focus or on, 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 on a number of processes within big institutions. They have digital initiatives, they have automation, they have um, initiatives that target adoption of AI, of uh, various technologies, or, and, and, and the actual adoption of, of new products. And it, it, I understand it takes a, a lot of time. And, and again, that, 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 that would be the, the, the one I see. Um, it might be legacy in terms of systems. It can be budgets, although, again, the MAS is helping a lot because there are grants. There's a red tech grant today available for a number of institutions who want to uh, implement uh, sandboxes initiatives, for example. Uh, so, the process is long because there are big institutions. Uh, maybe MAS can help, uh, I don't know, promote or, 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 or put together a, a fast track process that uh, would help them. Or maybe MAS can just uh, open a, a sandbox initiatives uh, themselves and, and invite uh, uh, some, some of, the, of, of these institutions. Um, to help them go faster, to help them accelerate the decision process. There's usually a number of stakeholders. So um, lead, lead by example, uh, and, and again, pushing, uh, pushing gently. So, but, but I think you, you're doing it at the end of the day, uh, the, the larger institutions have, have also a number of, of obligations. So um, you, you, you're doing it too. It's, it's, a, it's not necessarily something that is new. Uh, so I'm, I'm 
I'll, I'll think more about that and I'll definitely let you know if I have uh, other other ideas. But uh, to, to, to be fair, there's a lot of support from, from you in, uh, in Singapore. So I'm already grateful for that. Well, thank you, Florian. Thank you for your perspective, insights, suggestions, recommendations. We take those very seriously and we want to thank you for taking the time to share with us, uh, with us, you know, your journey, the challenges and some suggestions. And let's keep the dialogues going even post uh, SFF. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And, thank you. Uh, I think the time is up. I'm going to take the cue from the moderator. Thanks a lot, Sue, for joining us. You make thank the you. sessions more meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. much. Have a good day. There's Have another day. session now in uh, different breakout rooms for those who are here. Please welcome uh, to join us. It's called Conversation is Everything. Corinne, you're also yeah. welcome. So us. for those who are interested thank to, you. to listen, you can move on to the room. So the next event is on the room number four. Okay, so take the breakout room and choose room number four. And once again, thank you, Florian. Thanks and a lot, Duma. <clears throat> Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. So, uh, Jingling, you can turn off the recorder now. You can upload the.